Hey out there, my name is Josh Java here, and uh, bringing you another Unreal Development Kit tutorial today. We're going to talk about creating a shader, uh, specifically a planet shader, and this is part of my Material Editor Fundamentals series. So uh, today we're going to talk about creating this in Unreal Editor. This is a render directly in the Development Kit. Uh, we're going to talk about Photoshop and Crazy Bump and why I like Crazy Bump to generate normal maps. Uh, we're also going to talk about uh, the shader setup for this uh, in detail. We're going to create this um, material so that we can instance it using material instances. And um, we're going to talk about texture parameter, 2D, and vector parameter. Uh, very important when creating MICs. And uh, we're going to talk about something that's not documented very well called the light vector. And uh, we're going to go ahead and create an MIC of this and throw it in the game. So, uh, if you haven't seen the material instance or the material basics uh, tutorial series that I have, it's a two-part series. Go ahead and check that out. Um, and uh, you know, if you haven't followed me on Twitter, please do so. I uh, hope you enjoy the tutorial. Thanks. All right, so I found some freeware maps here, uh, and uh, this is just a color map. Notice in our color map that we don't have any uh, shadow information. Uh, not, not that you would necessarily see any shadows here, but. Uh, it's a good idea when you have a color map to not actually have any shadow information because the normal map takes care of it usually. Uh, so here's our, our color map, here's our emissive map. We're not actually going to plug it into the emissive slot in our material, but you'll see later we're going to do a light vector trick to show the emissive parts only in the dark areas of our model. Uh, here's a, a bump map actually that we're going to use to generate a normal map for our earth terrain. Here's uh, our cloud cover map. We're going to use this as an opacity map and as a uh, uh, to generate a normal map for our clouds. And uh, finally, here's our spec map. All right, so Crazy Bump is a program that I like to use because it gives you a lot of control, and uh, we can use a height map. Uh, let's make let's use the Earth Bump map and hit open. Give it a second, and uh, basically we get a nice preview of what this normal map is going to produce. Uh, I'm going to make a few changes to this. Like I like to bring the large detail down for something like this because, um, and the fine detail up because a lot of the fine detail, um, like the mountains and stuff, are going to come through a lot better than having large clumps of normal information. For this, we can go ahead and save normals to a file. Make sure that they're in. Uh, uh, square resolution and uh, go ahead and save the normals out as a, a TGA. Okay, so the editor opened now and uh, I've brought, uh, pulled in all of my textures. I have six of them total, the four um, main maps and then the two normal maps, one for the ground and one for the clouds. Um, I've actually already created the materials, uh, the material that we're going to use in this tutorial. So. What I'm going to go ahead and do is uh, open up the material and we'll go ahead and dissect what I've done. So here we go. Um, one thing that's going to help uh, hold down L in the preview window, we can move the light around. This is really going to help our as we preview our material. So let's talk about the first thing, and that is uh, the diffuse element. It's probably the most complex element. And uh, really, we have um, three things uh, being plugged into the diffuse. The earth, um, the main part of the diffuse is uh, where diffuse texture is getting plugged into. Now I added, uh, for all my texture samples, instead of going to texture uh, and adding a new texture sample, what I've done is I've added new param 2Ds and it basically does the same thing. Um, you can find this in um, parameters, uh, texture sample parameter 2D. Uh, but what this allows us to do later is it allows us to create um, an MIC uh, where we can actually change the textures around a lot easier. Um, you'll see that a lot in this material because what I like to do is um, use this as a parent material for any planet shader. And so I can go ahead and create, uh, let's say, a Mars shader. And all I have to do is just change the texture samples around and modify a few other parameters and we'll talk about how to go about creating, uh, making this uh, into more of a parent material. Now to the Earth Diffuse map, I've uh, added a Fresnel, and I've multiplied the Fresnel by a, uh, an atmosphere color, uh, and that color is just an RGB value, um, 115, and uh, this gives uh, five times more blue than, R and, than red and green, so that's why the atmosphere color is blue. If I increase this B value, um, we can add a more saturated blue color. Um, of course, you can change this color to whatever you want, but notice 
that I instead of using a, um, a constant three vector and modifying the RGB of that vector, which I could have done, I added a vector parameter, which is found under parameters. This will allow me to change the atmospheric color on the go if I wanted to create, for example, a material instance of this and uh, change around a few settings. It's the same idea as using a Param 2D instead of a texture uh, sample. So here's my normal map, and for the most part, I'm just taking this normal map, um, adding these two components to it, and I'm just plugging it right into the normal slot here. So basically what I'm doing is uh, I took my cloud map and my cloud normal map, and I'm going to be adding my, cloud, my clouds uh, uh, using my cloud map as sort of an opacity map for my normal map. And uh, I'm panning this whole thing across the surface of the Earth, so if you look closely, you see that the clouds are slowly panning. I give it a very low pan rate, so 0 0.0025, and I'm plugging it into both the uh, cloud map and the cloud normal map. That ensures that they pan at the same speed. Uh, and uh, then I'm multiplying it with the cloud normal map, and that's basically taking the normal map and masking it with the, uh, the grayscale cloud map. Okay. So let's look at this one. I'm basically doing the same thing, except what I'm doing is I'm taking this cloud map and I'm offsetting it. So I'm adding a, uh, a two vector uh, parameter, and uh, this two vector, I'm giving it a default value of negative point zero zero two, and I'm adding it to the texture coordinates. So what that does is it offsets it. it. So I'm plugging all that stuff into the panner, and the panner here has the same pan rate as the other clouds plugging that into the UVs um, and then I'm adding both of these networks into my surface normal map. Alright so uh, you notice that in the last one we talked about the the shadow offset uh, the cloud shadows. I'm plugging um, this output into my earth uh, shadow spec. So if you notice that um, the light is still not affecting the the shadows and that's basically how it should act. So again, I just take that output and I invert it by using a 1 minus x. You can find that in math 1 minus. And I just multiply that with the spec map. And then I plug that into the specular. Now, I also have a reflection spec power, which is at, set at 3. It's just a value that I found to work well. So this was sort of a tricky part to the shader. What I wanted to do is have these lights only get affected, uh, only turn on basically at night. Okay, so I'm taking a light vector, and uh, you can fi find that under vectors, uh, light vector, and I'm multiplying it by a constant 3 vector. And so if I take two vectors and I dot them together, I will get a scalar. And what I'm doing is I'm assigning this value to the A node in the if uh, module. So we can think of this dot product here, uh, if you want to think about it this way, as basically how much light is being shown on the surface uh, at that point. So uh, it's going to be variable and it's always changing. So uh, we're assigning this to A. Now for B, I'm just assigning a constant 1. Now the next three nodes in the if is uh, basically this is the conditional. It's determining what it's going to render. So if A is greater than B, if light here is greater than 1, it's going to render um, this emissive map uh, multiplied by 5. So, uh, and also if A is equal to B, it's going to render that too. Now if A is less than B, if the light is less than 1, it's just going to render uh, 0. Or just black, which essentially uh, doesn't do anything at all. So, uh, what I mean is that when we add our, you know, the combination of, of all these nodes together, adding black won't do anything to it at all. However, if our light is greater than or equal to 1, we're going to add this emissive element, which means that if it's dark, we're going to add the emissive element. All right, so we're going to close this app. We're going to create a material instance now. Right click on the material, create new material instance constant, and I've already done this. Open that up, and uh, this is sort of our preview. Uh, if you have something that looks like this, just make sure that you're under sphere preview if you're following along this tutorial. This is a good way to preview the material under some basic condition, uh, basic lighting conditions. Uh, but now you notice that we have all of these parameters exposed, so I can change the atmosphere color right here. Uh, let's say I wanted to make it a nice, uh, you know, greenish atmosphere. I can do that. You know, whatever you want to do. Um, this is really good again if you want to sort of um, tweak. Uh, let's say you wanted to make that Mars, um, you know, uh, material, and you have different uh, maps. You can just basically replace these maps, tweak the uh, 
you know, the atmosphere color, whatever you want to do, and uh, there you go. You don't have to mess with all the nodes in the material editor. So that's what makes it such a powerful to, uh, tool, the material instance uh, editor. So we made some quick little changes. So close these parameters out, and uh, let's take a look at this under um, more normal in-game lighting conditions. So here's my material now uh, in the uh, preview window in the editor. Nice bloom effect going on here. Uh, really looks nice with the, with the atmosphere. And I can rotate the sun around and uh, we really see that the night lights pop out at night and during the day they all but disappear and that's again much more visible in game and that's all due to the light vector. So hopefully you learned something. Um, Please feel free again to email me any questions. Uh, it was a fun tutorial to create. Thank you a lot.